All right, so the first topic of our discussion tonight is going to be on the differences between the Healy device and uh, other energy frequency devices that are basically out there and available. There's a growing number because this whole field of quantum medicine is, is going to be a huge area of development in the field of using energy medicine. It's going to be a, a major uh, growth area for our industries and healthcare. So it helps to understand what are the differences between different devices. And it just basically comes back to that with the Healy and the time waiver technology, that the, the primary difference is what we call the quantum sensor. Other than that, it does have other functions which are available in other types of frequency devices that are around. But basically, no one has the quantum sensor technology on the planet except for time waiver and the Healy um, miniaturized device of the time waiver. So what makes this quantum sensor so important and so critically different to all the other types of devices that are out there? And it's this key thing here, and it's called the Kozarev mirror. And the Kozarev mirror is a type of uh, a shielding that is inside the device. It's like a little um, chamber. And this particular chamber is capable of doing two very important things. The circuitry of the unit is enclosed into this chamber and the chamber does two things. It reduces the, or provides shielding against the Earth's electromagnetic field. And by shielding the Earth's electromagnetic field, it stops interference with what signals are coming in and out of the device. Okay, so that's the first thing. It has to be shielded from the, the Earth's electromagnetic field in order to access a field that's above the Earth's energetic electromagnetic field. The second key aspect is that the chamber is made out of particular metals and it allows the waves that are generated from oscillating electrons to bounce off the sides of the chamber so that they neutralize each other and form what we call scalar energetic fields. And um, so that process of forming scalar energetic fields um, is what allows the sensor to then break through the time um, constrictions and access higher dimensional energies, higher dimensional information fields that exist on higher dimensions of consciousness. So we exist as a multidimensional being. We have our physical bodies, we have our emotional body, mental body, our soul body, and all the way up to the 12th dimension where we have our highest avatar spiritual body that is one with the creator. So down through this process of these 12 dimensions, there's various layers of densities of energy and information. And our job is to basically evolve as humans and with our, to, to embody our soul our six dimensional soul, which acts as a control center for us to then access information of our higher spiritual dimensions. So we wanna bring those higher dimensional spiritual information, which is basically loving energy, down through our soul and then into our mental, emotional and physical bodies. So, the healing process is all about bringing that divine loving energy into the physical body, transforming all the other energetic frequencies that are causing disturbances or distortions in the flow of energy within the body. And so that process of bringing the higher loving energies down is the critical factor in any self-healing modality. And so we, our job is to try and identify 
what are the blockages in these other dimensions, in the mental dimension, in the emotional dimensions, in the physical dimensions. And so each of these layers of consciousness have information in them, which is a record of everything that's ever happened to us. So we're like a big walking hard drive and we're like a transmitter and receiver picking up signals from the different densities of these energy fields. And these, uh, this information is either coherent or meaning it's in line with our health, that's optimizing the function of our bodily functions and our mental and emotional function. And so that brings us into a state of coherence. Coherence is when the waves or the frequencies line up together and combine to form a coherent waveform. Where we get two waves coming in that are not coherent, then they cause an interference pattern, which creates friction and then a distorted energy flow. So we're trying to identify where those distortions of energy flow are occurring in our emotional field, in our mental field. Our mental field relates to our thoughts and our beliefs. And so most of the energetic devices that are out there on the market are very, very useful and effective at accessing the information from the body, the physical body. They rely on biofeedback devices where they get signals, they put a frequency into the body, the body responds and sends back a signal, and then we look for a match of those signals to determine what's the problem and what frequency or treatment we need to offer. So that type of device we call bioresonance devices, they're very effective, but they're very uh, focused on the physical and maybe the next level up, which is what we call the etheric level, which relates to the acupuncture meridians. So you've all probably heard of acupuncture meridians. So that's the interface of the higher dimensional energies coming from the mental emotional areas, interfacing with the etheric level which then goes directly through the meridians into the physical body, into the cells, into the nervous system, which regulates the energy flow in the physical body. So most frequency devices focus on treating the physical etheric level, whereas the Healy and the time wave technology is focusing on the upstream emotional, mental and spiritual layers of the soul in the sixth dimension and above. So we believe that from a causative perspective that most diseases and disorders in health are a physical manifestation of a mental, emotional, spiritual dysfunction. And that's causing the lack of the energetic flow coming down through these dimensions to get into the physical body. Most people that have gone through any sort of self-healing process have basically removed these blockages in their emotions, in their, in their beliefs, in their fears, in their traumas. And they've done a lot of deep, insightful, reflective work on bringing up all this old stuff that's been stored in their bodies and in their fields. And they've transformed that by using their own consciousness to connect to their higher self, their, their soul body, and bring down those divine loving energies to transform the fears and the traumas and the negative emotions. And that's pretty much how you develop most self-healing ancient technologies, most traditional met methods of self-healing and shamanistic um, uh, methods involves connecting yourself to your, to your higher dimensional self and bringing that energy in to transform the negative energies. So where we've, where we've um, so what does that tell us? It tells us that we ourself are a quantum sensor we have the ability to, to synchronize and, and bring our emotions and our thoughts together in a state of coherence by linking our mind with our heart. And the heart is critical because it's the, it's the doorway to the soul, the sixth dimension. And so when we can clear the obstructions and bring the heart and the mind into a state of balance, then we generate 
the same waves that the Healy and the time wave generate, which is the scalar waves. The scalar waves basically are energy fields that are beyond time and space and allow us to access higher dimensions of consciousness and the information in those different layers. So we ourselves have that ability and we always have, and it just takes time to develop and to evolve and to clear out the blockages. And the more we do that, the more intuitive we become, the more we can access the information that we need to access of what's causing the problem and then we can transform it and heal ourselves. So, but now this Healy device has made it easier for people to start clearing the rubbish in their emotional and mental fields, which is blocking the flow of this divine energy, which is creating the healing effect. So this is the beauty of how this device works. It's working on these higher dimensions of consciousness. It still works on the physical, of course, because we use uh, a combination of different energies. We're using scalar energy as well as physical, electrical and magnetic energies. And so that way we're getting the complete coverage of both the mental, emotional and physical dimensions of consciousness. This is a picture of the uh, Kozarev uh, mirror, which I was telling about. So this really is the, the game changer without this, then, you know, the Healy would be just like everything else that's out there that's working on the etheric physical interface, which is great if you're trying to deal with physical symptoms, but it may not be accessing the upstream psychological, emotional, spiritual, dysfunctional conflicts that are created through various traumas. Uh, when we were children, we all got exposed to different types of shocks, most of it happens between zero and seven years old. And so a lot of it can be unconsciously suppressed and or we're not aware of it. So we do need to have a process of going back and reflecting and going inwards, which is where meditation is so critical. And that's where we have been in the past, really without meditation and accessing the deeper parts of our subconscious, we wouldn't know what things were causing the problem. So that doesn't mean we can stop. We, we can just stop doing that and rely on the Healy. No, it means that we have now a tool that assists us in that process of doing deep reflection and accessing the data and getting the benefit of the Healy to help prompt us to do that. So what we actually have is a, a union of our inner technology, which is our own ability to connect to higher consciousness and access the information, to then connect with an outer technology, which is the Healy, to then facilitate matching up the frequencies that are going to create the greatest state of coherence and dissolve the blockages that were causing that blockage in the flow of energy from the higher dimensions. So it's a union and we have an active participant uh, role to play whenever we use these energetic devices. This is the little Healy unit. It, it doesn't look like much, but it, like the information, the technology in that is, is, has cost millions and millions of dollars to develop. So we're very blessed to have this. And but to just get a better idea about why these scalar energies are useful and why this makes the Healy different is that through breaking through uh, these energetic barriers of consciousness through this device, the Kozarev mirror, we can get through the Earth's electromagnetic field and go out into a higher dimension of space. And that allows us to access this information with the scalar waves that are generated within the chamber of the device. Now, just to give you a quickie on some scalar wave things, so most people don't know what the um, what scalar waves are. Um, basically, they're created when you get two electromagnetic waves that are coming from opposite directions, converging and being completely uh, matching in their frequencies and their wavelength 
And as they come in and they overlap, they neutralize each other. So the, electro the electromagnetic component is neutralized, but that leaves behind what we call a zero frequency or a scalar zero point energy field, which results in these scalar waves. And these scalar waves are basically like um, compression longitudinal waves, a bit like sound waves. So they radiate out in all directions as opposed to electromagnetic frequencies, which travel in a particular vector in a straight line. But when those two straight lines come together and match, then they can neutralize to create the, the, uh, the, the circular standing waves, which is what we call the scalar zero point field. Now this scalar field exists out time, outside of relative time and space. And this is why we can access the higher dimensions of consciousness beyond the interference of the Earth's electromagnetic field. Um, so they expand out in circles. Uh, now, the energy of the scalar uh, field doesn't decay over time or distance. So it instantaneously transfers information no matter where you are anywhere on the planet. And, and this is true, as we know it, that when we go in deep into consciousness and we connect with someone, we, we have almost a telepathic connection with that person instantaneously. Uh, you'll often get the phone call saying, oh, hi, you know, I was just thinking about you. Uh, <laughs> and next minute there's a phone call because consciousness is, is allowing that to happen almost instantaneously. Okay, so it's also unlike electromagnetic uh, energy, where it travels through space and it's, it hits different obstacles and it then gets, uh, it gets blocked. Scalar waves go through all matter. They cannot be stopped. And so uh, it doesn't matter where you are, you will always get access through these particular scalar fields that are being generated. Um, and as I said before, uh, because they're capable of passing through everything, they have a great capacity to, to deliver information as well as energy. And that's really what our high, higher consciousness is doing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's providing energy in the form of information. And, mm -hmm. and another way of saying that is frequencies. Frequencies are the information that are carried on top of the energy. So it's a combination of energy and information infused together and so um yeah so we can generate these scalar waves ourselves within our own body within our own heart and our mind and we can project those scalar waves out and we can access higher dimensions of consciousness and we can then be energized by bringing those higher dimensional energies back into the physical now, this is a little diagram which shows you the, um, the quantum sensor. And it shows you that on the left hand side, I wish I knew how to use a pointer here, but um, I've got no arrow or anything here. So um, on the left hand side, we have the object, which is us. And we have the Healy, which connects us to the blue wave which is the information field. The information field in our higher dimensions of emotional consciousness and mental consciousness. And that then records the type of dysfunction, the Healy records the type of distortion or dysfunction that's present in the information field. It then compares that distortion of the information field with a database of different frequencies on the right hand side. And it then brings all of those frequencies out of the device. And it then matches and compares the oscillation patterns or the frequencies, comparing the two and they're looking for a match, a resonance. And that will then determine that that frequency relates to the cause of the problem that this particular person has. So let's say that a person has got a particular disorder, let's say um, uterine fibroids, 
Okay, there you go, off the top of my head. Um, so what's the cause of uterine fibroids? Inflammation, fibrosis, hormonal dysfunction, but ultimately we go back deeper and deeper, we start asking questions, what's causing the inflammation? What's causing the fibrosis? And we find that there's psychic, emotional uh, trauma and blockages in the flow of energy, which are now allowing inflammation to be chronically there. And whenever there's chronic inflammation, you get tissue destruction and fibrosis. So stress-related mental emotional dysfunction due to traumas or other beliefs is really the driver, the causative driver of why somebody develops energetic blockages, which over time become solid masses within the tissues and thus the expression of a, of a, a uterine myoma or a fibroid, which is a type of sort of a benign growth, which in, is encapsulated with fibrous tissue. So in this case, um, rather than just treating the inflammation, we need to treat the cause of the inflammation. And so the oscillation pattern in the information field will detect that, oh, you've got these particular fears, you have these particular emotional um, linkages associated with these fears. And it might be, for instance, your fear of unworthiness or your fear of failure or your fear of being punished. And so, it could be your fear of separation that occurred when you were a child and you're you're weaned from your mother. It can be any of these types of deep-seated psychological traumas that are buried in your subconscious. And so that's allowing us to access those memories and find out what, what frequencies are able to match and neutralize those negative energies and frequencies and come up with a treatment process. So this is a real important feature, the most important feature of the time waiver and the Healy, in that when it does the scan, it then comes up with a recommendation of the treatment. And those frequencies are sent out to the patient in a particular sequence. And the sequence is almost as important as the selection of the frequencies. Because if you send one frequency before another, then it gets, you produce a certain result. If you change the order of those, it creates a different result. And so it changes everything. Even the sequence of the frequencies is, in, is important. So most other frequency devices on the market can't do that. They can't provide a real time uh, assessment of the identification of the frequencies as well as the sequence as well as how long those frequencies should be running in real time. Uh, it, it, they're more static systems that basically come up with a biofeedback recommendation, and then that results in a static treatment, which then is not going to vary from one person to another. And so this is um, the primary issue that we have with a lot of other devices, which all still work, uh, they just have certain things that they do really well and other things they can't. And that, that's where we see the Healy Time Waiver technology has, having created a bit of a gap there in that um, system because it uses scalar wave uh, detection systems to identify the problem and then to create the real-time sequence of the treatment, uh, which will be changing from moment to moment. As we have spoken about in previous meetings, we've talked about the energetic structures that the body uses to connect this flow of energy, which comes down through the different dimensional layers. And we all know about our chakras. And this is a diagram that basically shows, oh, I've got my arrow here. That's great, good. You can see that these individual seven chakras in the, um, are linked up with a type of channel that oscillates between each of the chakras. So these are the chakra channels that connect the flow of energy in the, in the different layers of consciousness. So these, uh, the reason I'm showing you this is that most people uh, have, a, have an understanding of the, the chakras and how they 
they pull the energy down through the different layers of consciousness. Each layer of consciousness has their own chakras, their, their, their set of chakras and their own meridians. And then we have these interconnecting structures between the chakras, right? Now, not a lot of people know the function of these, these, these channels. Uh, the, uh, they call various names, the Ida and the Pingali. And, but basically what happens is that these channels create a, a electromagnetic frequency around the central channel. And this electromagnetic mag frequency is set up so that the wavelength and the frequency is directly opposite to each other as it travels up through the channels and it creates a scalar wave pattern by neutralizing the electromagnetic frequencies and therefore we get left with a scalar wave field. So remember that a scalar wave field occurs when two matching electromagnetic waveforms meet each other that are exactly the same but opposite. Then they neutralize themselves. So these two, these, this brown and this white pathway, it's like a, um, it's like, imagine if you had like a big guitar string or a big string on a bass from your, from your tail to your head. And when you pluck that bass string, it vibrates. And the frequency that it vibrates creates these particular vortex nodes depending on the frequency that you're oscillating at. And these channels represent the, the anti-node of the wave, which cancels each other out and then for creates a scalar wave. So this is how the body generates scalar waves, right? We have an energetic system built in that creates scalar waves. So our whole system is designed to work on higher dimensional energy, which is what we call at the etheric level, we call it prana, life force or chi. We have a way of integrating this environmental energy from different dimensions, bringing it into through the fields, through the chakras, into the meridians and into the cells. And we just wanna try and keep that flow of information and energy going as best as possible. And so that's just like, the human being has been supremely, there's nothing more incredibly complicated and magical as how the human has been created. It's, it's the most sophisticated design of anything that could be imagined compared to what our human technology has ever been able to achieve. So the energetic structures here allow us to create these scalar fields which connect and provide instantaneous information and energy to all parts of the body instantaneously. We're not waiting on signals of hormones to go down from the top of our head down to the, to the spleen or the liver to carry the, the hormone to initiate the, the response. All of that physical, biochemical, molecular stuff is happening by virtue of frequencies that are being generated within the body by these particular scalar waves. So uh, one of the most important ones that, that we are affected by is the scalar wave of the planet Earth, okay? The planet, because we are Earthlings, we are connected to the Earth and we're connected to the electromagnetic scalar wave frequency of the Earth, which is around about eight hertz. And so the scalar pattern of the, of the Earth allows us to tap into the energy of the earth and to provide an energetic nourishment from mother earth. That's why we call her mother because she's providing an energetic nourishment up through the base chakra, uh, which is often what we call the yin energy, the yin Kundalini energy that comes up into the body. And then we can transform that and move it around the body um, and mix it with other energies that we get from our environment, which we get from higher dimensions and cosmic, mm -hmm. cosmic radiations. The cosmic radiations can come down through the crown chakra and then go into the channels and meet up with the, with the 
the earth energies and it's it's when we get the combination of earth scalar waves with cosmic scalar waves when those two things come together in our heart we have the union of the divine feminine and the divine masculine energies which then creates basically a cosmic explosion of love or an orgasmic cosmic mixture of energy which which is the union of the male and the female the yin and the yang and that creates then the birth of the sun the birth of the the christ okay the christ energy which is the neutral force which is a zero point energy field which then expands out within us and creates harmony and coherence within us so using different terminologies you know scientific terminologies with spiritual terminologies it's all the same stuff basically but the energy is coming in from cosmic sources and from the earth and these interact with us through these energetic structures the energy fields the chakras particularly in the heart and from that place where we have that union of the two forces masculine and feminine we go into a state of coherence now the brain and the heart come into alignment and now the heart can direct the mind all right so that's how it's supposed to happen the heart is supposed to be in control not the mind the mind is the general the heart is the emperor the emperor sends out the edict which the general then obeys but unfortunately we've had a slight problem with our maturation and growth as humans <laughs> and we've had very little development of our heart energy with a huge massive overdevelopment of our mental energy so now we have this imbalance and even within our brain we have two hemispheres the left and the right hemisphere one represents logical functionality another more creative one is more male one is more female but when we can bring our energies back into unison where we have heart and mind resonating together on the same frequency then the two hemispheres will come into balance and even the interchange of frequencies in the brain create scalar waves which are coherent and those scalar waves that are coherent give us a sense of blissfulness okay of peace of of joy and so the combination of this mental coherence between the left and the right hemispheres in alignment with our heart the left and the right chambers of our heart the union of male and female energies within us creates a blissful loving energy which is the transfer of energy from those higher dimensions and that's the healing the healing wavelength the healing process which we can now hopefully rather than sit and medit meditate in a cave for 20 years we can use modern technology to assist us in that process always remembering that we we are the ones in control and we need to interact with our consciousness with the use of the healy device we just can't hand everything over to the healy device okay this is a, supposed to be a form of empowerment to allow you to take control of your own self healing and health and that of your families and friends you can assist people using this type of tool but it is only a tool an amazing tool and we just need to know how to interact with it so that brings